I am so excited to teach you about another artist. But before we begin, I would like to thank you guys for sending me uh, pictures of the artwork that you guys have been creating and, along with some emails. And, and it's so nice to be able to see what you guys have done. And I want to encourage you to keep up the great work. And I also love seeing the pictures of you with your artwork and your smiling faces. So it's really nice to be able to connect in that sort of way with you guys. So again, keep up the great work and continue to send me images of your guys' um, artwork. Okay, so the artist that we are going to learn about today, his name is Andy Warhol. And he was born in 1926 and died in 1987. And he is what we call the founder of pop art, of the pop art movement. Um, here in the United States. So there was also a pop art movement happening around the same time in um, Britain. Um, but he is, so Andy Warhol was born and raised in Pittsburgh. And as a child, around the age he was in third grade, he um, contracted some sort of sickness that confined him to his bedroom. And at that time, that's when he started developing his um, interest in art and sketching. He also listened a lot to the radio and collected um, pictures and posters of movie stars. And then when he was in high school, he, uh, he won a Scholastic Art and Writing Award. And um, after high school, then he went on to study art. In At first, Andy Warhol wanted to become an art teacher. But his plans did change, and he ended up studying um, commercial art, which is art primarily um, designed around advertising. Andy Warhol received his Bachelor's of Fine Arts in pictorial design in 1949, and after that, he moved to New York. And that is where he started his um, commercial design kind of career. He got his first commission to design or draw shoes for Glamour magazine. <laughs> and um, and then after that, that's when he started becoming well known for his um, advertising. By the 1960s, Andy Warhol had made a name for himself. Pop art um, includes imagery from popular culture. So anything like advertising, Anything that's mass produced, comic books, um, movie stars that you see over and over again, um, advertising as far as food, as far as um, cleaning supplies, yeah. um, all that sort of thing is what um, pop art kind of adopts. So some examples of Andy Warhol's subjects that he used for his paintings and his artwork were things like Campbell's tomato soup or Brillo pads, um, which is a cleaning thing. Um, also, he did Coca-Cola, Mickey Mouse, Marilyn Monroe, Elvis Presley, and the list goes on. Um, he would, he used a technique called silk screening, and he didn't do this for every single one of his paintings, but the ones that, um, that are kind of um, redundant, where you see more than one image that is the exact same, um, he used what's called silk screening, which is a method that an artist can use to reproduce an object more than once or a subject more than once in, um, so to do a series. And we are actually going to not learn silk screening because that takes a lot more um, supplies and tools that we don't, that you probably don't have at home. But I'm going to teach you guys today a technique called graphite transfer that will uh, mimic the same kind of method that Andy Warhol used when reproducing like his soup cans or the Brillo pads or even Marilyn Monroe. Okay, so here is an image of one of Andy Warhol's um, Marilyn Monroe's and this was a silk screen and this one was done in 1964. Here's actually a black and white picture of Andy Warhol in 1970. And then I'm going to show you guys um, one of his popular soup can um, images right there okay this one is actually not the tomato soup 
Um, this is the beef noodle soup, but he titled this one Big Campbell's Soup Can, 19 cents. And this one was done in 1962. Um, but often you'll see the Campbell's Soup ones that um, are painted over and over and over and over again. There's, I don't even know. I have never counted how many soup cans are in the image, but probably around between 30 and 50 in one. Okay, so those are um, some examples of Warhol's work. What we're going to use today for our art project is you're going to need pencil, you're going to need paper, and you're going to need a ruler. And um, you're going to choose whether you want to do yours in marker, crayon, or color pencil. Um, the ones that I'm going to show you are done in marker because marker is really fun and gives you that nice, bold um, color. Okay. Um, what we are going to need, though, is pencils that are soft okay so a soft lead and a soft lead. so pencils come in a range of heaviness or um, hardness okay and so you don't want a 2h or any sort of h's because those the leads are going to be lighter when you use them you want something in the b range and so often you'll have a pencil that has HB2 on it and it says soft. So those ones will work great for our project. Um, this is another example. It says soft, HB2. Um, those are pretty standard pen uh, pencils that you will find at home, but sometimes you'll get the, the cheaper ones that um, when you draw, when you write, there the lead is light. Okay, a light lead, and that is not going to work for our purposes today. So make sure you try and find a two um, HB pencil, number two. Okay, okay. So first, what we're going to do is we are going to split our piece of paper into four quadrants, and in order to do that, we need to measure. We also need to divide the number. Okay, so this paper is eleven inches long and so we're going to divide that in half so half of 11 is five and a half so I'm going to make a couple marks at five and a half and that way my line will be nice and straight so I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to match up all three of those marks and then I'm going to draw a nice straight line it divides paper in half and then we are going to do it the other direction and it is eight and a half so half of eight and a half is four and a quarter and a quarter thank you Autry you're welcome and we're gonna make a couple marks at four and a quarter and we're gonna connect those And what we have are nice four nice equal sections okay and the next thing that we're gonna have is and you could take any piece of paper and you're gonna want um, a smaller piece so you're gonna want to so maybe two pieces of, of paper and then you're gonna cut out one section okay so you're gonna have one that you don't cut up and then one that you do cut up and the one that you do cut up you are going to draw an object now you're going to choose something, and it could be anything, that you think is mass produced, um, that would be considered popular culture in our day, okay? So I thought of a Elmer's glue bottle. Um, some other examples would be Hershey's milk chocolate bar, because mm -hmm. that is mass produced. Um, another example might be um, a Nerf bowl. So what you guys are going to do is you're going to do a simple pencil drawing of whatever object that you choose. Now, you don't need to do any sort of shading. You're just going to focus on the important lines of the object that you're drawing. Okay, and so on mine, I did, um, I did darken a part of the label, but that's okay. Okay, and you're going to take this drawing. And in order to be able to mass produce it or replicate it over and over again, we're going to use that technique that I was talking about earlier called graphite transfer. And what you're going to do is you're going to turn your drawing over 
and you're going to take your pencil and you're going to use the side of it and you are going to color in the entire back side with graphite. And just so you know, pencils are no longer made with lead. They're made with graphite. Mm -hmm. It's much safer for our bodies. Sometimes we call it lead, but that's just the old term coming out. It's actually graphite. Okay, so we're going to fill it in really well, heavy, with this graphite. Kind of get in all the spaces. And make sure that you've covered all the areas so that your, you know, where your, your sketch is, that you've colored in and covered all those areas behind it. Okay, so then you're going to take that. And you're going to set your sketch over the top of one of those quadrants. See if I get one for this project purpose, you probably don't need an incredibly sharp pencil. And you are going to trace over your lines, nice and heavy, because you want it to transfer. doesn't need to be perfect, but it's enough to give you the gist of the object that you have been drawing. Go over all of my important lines. Cool. Glue. Go over the symbol of Elmer's real quick. A little bit more complicated. of the label and you're going to do this four times I'll finish this real quick so you guys can kind of see what it looks like and then I won't make you watch me do it four times because that would be too boring and we're going to go over Okay, I didn't do any of these lines. We'll do some of those. And there you go. It transfers it. Okay, so now you've transferred, or I've transferred, my drawing or my sketch of the glue bottle four times. And you can see that it transferred... Um, not perfectly, it's, but it gives you a very good idea where everything needs to be um, well enough that you can see it. So then you take this fun sketch quadrant of these glue bottles and you're going to color them using either markers, crayons, or color pencils. It's up to you. And you're going to color them in bright and different colors for every single quadrant. So I would suggest not even doing the normal colors of, for in my case, a Elmer's glue bottle. I would do them in bright, crazy, fun colors. And you can repeat the colors, but you wanna make sure that you repeat the colors um, in different locations. So if I'm doing this quadrant, the background in purple, I don't wanna have purple on my glue bottle, but I might use purple on my glue bottle in the um, adjacent um, 
box, okay? So I'm gonna show you some examples that are completed so you can get a great idea. Okay, so here is one that one of my daughters did of the Hershey's chocolate bar. Turned out awesome. And as you can see, only a couple of the colors are repeated, um, but that that's great. Okay, so she repeated red a little bit down here on the edge of the wrapper and uh, for the background on this one. Okay, and then we've got the cell phones. Okay, and those turned out awesome and they're mass produced in society. And so she chose that as her subject and repeated that and used some really fun colors to do that. Okay. And then we've got the Nerf bullets. Those are always produced, mass produced, and oftentimes um, lying all over the floor or yeah. the outside. And um, so anyways, um, that was a great one for my son who did that. And um, he only repeated the co a couple colors um, a few times, but it turned out great. And it really, really displays the whole um, idea of pop art using something that is mass produced in our society and culture and um, and showing that in an art form. Okay, so I hope that you will take this project, um, choose a subject, have a lot of fun with it, and um, really enjoy the whole graphite transfer because that is a lot of fun. And it's actually a technique that you can use um, later on um, when doing art projects or um, in school, if you need to, you know, you've got this really cool letter that you did and it's really hard um, to redraw that letter, well, you can always do a graphite transfer of that and reproduce that in another section of like a poster board or something. So it's a great technique to, to be able to use. So I hope that you enjoy this lesson. And again, always um, try and send me the images um, of your artwork at jcarry at eagles.edu and let me know how it went and how you did and always tell me if you had fun doing it. Okay, have a great afternoon.